This week on Maker Update, a Google Calendar for your wall, real pinball over the internet, a laser crown, snoozing skeleton, and upgrading a vintage vending machine. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, back again with another Maker Update. I hope you're all doing great, and I hope you're ready to get inspired with some projects I found this week from the Maker community. And uh, let's get started with my pick for the project of the week. On his YouTube channel, Thomas Sandlatterer shows how he made this Google Calendar compatible digital dashboard with a 4K TV and a $50 Raspberry Pi 4 computer. I've seen a good amount of Magic Mirror Pi projects that use screens and two-way mirrors to do stealth weather and calendar dashboards, but the reality of those systems is that setting them up and updating them is kind of a pain. Tom's system is much more straightforward. It skips the mirror to help keep the brightness and energy use low and uses web-based software called Dackboard that integrates with Google Calendar and can be customized easily over any web browser. It's also nice to see the new 4K resolution of the Pi put to practical use. According to Tom, it makes the small text on the calendar easier to see. He's also doing this interesting thing where he's using the HDMI CEC protocol so that the Raspberry Pi turns the TV on and off over the HDMI connection to save power. Tom also has about a dozen other tips and customizations that you can read about on his software setup guide. All in all, it's a great project and you can tell he's put a lot of thought into making it something that's easy to use and relatively painless to reproduce. I have some other cool projects to share. Last week I showed you how the surrogate TV team created RC cars that anyone can race over the internet. This week they've taken the formula in a different direction that's closer to my heart and they made an internet controlled Batman pinball machine. Inside, they have a Raspberry Pi connected to a relay hat with four relays, two for the flippers, one for start, and one for the middle button, <coughs> which in this game acts as a ball launch. This is convenient because otherwise they were going to need to rig up an actuator to pull the plunger. Wired like this, online players can use their computer keyboard to trigger all the functions on the pinball machine. What's even crazier is how they're using computer vision to translate the scoreboard online. It's definitely worth checking out the video. On Instructables, Penguin shows how they made this laser cut LED crown or tiara with animated lights. The heart of this project is a large 60 LED NeoPixel ring that ships in four segments that you have to solder together. A small Adafruit trinket board handles the animation code and a rechargeable lithium ion pack powers both the board and the lights. The laser cut acrylic ring is sized so that the LEDs sit perfectly under each of the veins of the crown carrying the light all the way through. It's a very cool effect. And Greg Zemwalt is back with another 3D printed contraption. This one is a skeleton and coffin themed useless box. You hit the button and a skeleton pops out and hits the button again to close it. The whole thing is self-contained and battery powered and there's actually more going on here than you think. The button outside the box triggers the sequence but a clever system of gears and cams and roller switches makes the rest of the magic happen. Now for a few tips and tools. On the Exploratorium blog, Ryoko Matsumoto shows how they were able to take a very old cash-only vending machine and upgrade it to take card payments. They use theirs as a vending machine for little tinkering kits that people can take home when they leave the museum. On Glitch, Tiffany Sang released a free web-based app that converts images into pixel art that you can copy and paste into Make Code's arcade projects. It's a great way to quickly customize your game or somebody else's. On the Cool Tools channel, I got to talk with Becky Stern about a $7 drill attachment that's great for mixing resin or for stirring paint. Last week, a bunch of machinists and fabricators on YouTube shared tips using the TipBlitz19 hashtag. I've got a link in the description that points to a playlist of all kinds of tips. On Gareth Branwin's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales newsletter, he shares a great one from Bob Comack about a router bit storage rack where each bit has an example of how its profile cuts. And if you use a Hakko 888 soldering iron over on Thingiverse, there's a 3D printed caddy designed by Sticky Fox you can make that fits on the base and holds different soldering iron tips. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, you can take a look at the new video they have up on understanding and controlling H bridges. This is a common circuit design for controlling motors. If you use motor controller shields or hats for your Arduino Raspberry Pi projects, you're probably using a circuit like this whether you know it or not. This video provides a little extra insight on what's going on. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment so I know you're out there. Or you can leave a thumbs up. 
Uh, you can also get on the Maker Update email newsletter to get show notes emailed out to you automatically each week so you never miss a show. Big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. Next week, we're going to be doing the monthly Adafruit edition, so you can catch us over there, or you can just wait it out over here. We'll be back. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.